Did you hear what Elmer got for Christmas? His wife got him a used treadmill, a diet cookbook, and an apron with flowers on it. My wife conspired with my sons to get me the SE5. So let's take a look at it. You might remember my review of the SE3, okay? This is the SE5. It's uh, 11 inches long from tip to tip. It's got a five and a quarter inch blade. It's about an inch and a half, a little over an inch and a half wide. And the blade is uh, a quarter inch thick. It's actually the thickest of the SE knives. Even the six is a little thinner. You can see the SE5 is a lot thicker. It really fits in the hand nicely. If you've got a, at least a medium large hand. I like canvas micarta. It's got a good bit of texture to it and it stays grippy even when it's wet. The knife comes with a proprietary powder coat by Rowan that is really durable. You can see on the SE3, I've done a lot of batoning and it has worn off a little bit where I, where I beat it. That's the result of a lot of abuse, okay? So I would classify this as being extremely durable. Both of these knives are made with 1095 steel, which rusts, but it's got so many advantages that um, I'm perfectly happy to put up with the risk of a little rust. Why is this knife so thick? Well, this knife is designed to do something different than the SE3 or the 6. You know, most of the time I carry a knife, the primary function I want it to have is to cut. And so I want the blade to be designed in such a way as to make it easy to get a good sharp edge on it. The 3 is a perfect example of how that's done. It's done by starting with a thin blade to start with. And then you give it a flat grind. A hollow grind would be even more dramatic. A flat grind means that from the tip to the cutting edge is flat. Okay, so this is a very acute triangle going from this down to this. And then once you're at the cutting edge, you're already starting with a very thin blade, and then you grind the cutting edge into it, and it's easy to get a sharp edge. Think about how this is done with a razor, straight edge razor. You start with a very thin blade, you hollow grind it, so that by the time you get to the cutting edge, it's already very thin, and then you sharpen it from there. So you're gonna get a very, very sharp razor's edge. Compare that to the five. The five, you start with a quarter inch of steel, and then you don't even start thinning the blade until you get to about a third of the way down the blade. So from this point to this point is flat. So at this point right here, this blade is still a quarter inch thick. So this is a relatively obtuse angle. It makes it a little more difficult to get a very sharp edge. Now. This knife does shave. I just shaved a patch on my arm. Looks like the mange. The knife came sharp enough to shave from the factory. I touched it up a little bit, but this knife is not designed to be the sharpest knife in the drawer. This knife is designed to be the toughest knife in the drawer, and it does that very well. Normally, I prefer a knife to focus primarily on cutting. That's what a knife is, right? It's something you draw out to cut with. So I want it to cut. But that assumes that I have other tools at my disposal. If I'm a downed fighter pilot for whom this knife was designed, this might be the only survival tool I have. And it needs to cut. It also needs to break into a can so I can eat. It needs to cut through sheet metal. It needs to chop. It needs to baton without me having to worry about whether I'm gonna break the blade. It needs to take a lot of stress. It needs to break glass. It has a glass breaker pommel. It just overall needs to be an extremely rugged tool. The SE5 does that in spades. Like the three, the five has some jimping here for your thumb. It doesn't have a finger choil right here for very close, delicate carving work, but the five is not designed to do anything delicately. If you really had to do anything, 
you know, somewhat delicate, careful carving. Okay, you could work right here with this part of the handle. This is, in fact, a choil. It's just not one that's designed to fit your finger in it. Another interesting feature of the SE5 is it has this bow drill divot. If you're gonna start a fire with a bow and drill, then you can hold the drill with your knife. Start your fire. I've heard people say that that's kind of a gimmicky feature. I don't know, maybe you won't use it very much, but it's one of those things where if you ever have to use it once, you'll be glad to have it. I like the sheath that comes with it. It's a Kydex sheath with really good retention and adjustable retention. So here we have a screw that if I pull it up, it's gonna tighten so that it makes it more difficult to remove the knife, all right? It's not gonna fall out on its own and it makes it difficult to pop out of its sheath. Not impossible. You can still get it out if you have to, but it's gonna take a good bit of force, okay? So you can tighten that to make sure it doesn't pop out unintentionally. And then you can adjust it to whatever tension you prefer to release. All right, it's got a little hole, a weep hole, to drain the water out of it. It comes with this clip, so you can wear it on your belt. You've seen me wear the SE3 as a cross draw horizontally on my belt here. I removed this clip and attached it to the Kydex sheath for the SE5 and tested it as a cross draw on my belt. Now, it doesn't really work because this knife weighs a full pound and it tends to sag at the handle and even twist the, the belt a little bit and kind of pull it away. So it's just kind of floppy and it doesn't, it, it flops around when you walk. It's not really comfortable. You could probably fix that by having a clip that was wider so that it would attach to the belt at two more distant points and be more secure. Okay, there's some sheaths out there like that. I'm gonna be looking into them and if, you know, if it's worth it, I'll get one and try it out. If I carry this knife, it's either gonna be on a pack or on my belt vertically. The SE5 might not be your go-to everyday carry knife, okay? That might still be the SE3. You can carry it horizontally. It's easy to get a good sharp cutting edge on it. It's tough enough for most of the things. Honestly, what I use a knife most often for on a daily basis is to cut open packages that come in the mail, okay, really. But if you need a survival tool in your bug out bag or your truck, something that's gonna be extremely rugged, this is a better way to go. In fact, I don't know that it comes much better than this. All right, thanks for watching. Snowman here. Go to the blog, survivalnewsonline.com. I'll have more information about the SE5 for your enjoyment. I'll see you there. Oh, here's something else my wife got me. She made me this hat. She crocheted it from merino wool. It fits perfect, and it's got these awesome ear flaps. See, we don't have TV, so we have to use our imagination to entertain ourselves. Right? No, I'm kidding. These things are for keeping your ears warm and looking medieval.